Okay, so obviously my video output has been severely hindered for a while now. I tell you, being a teacher can be a pain in the free time department, and when you're working on finalizing a novel, that makes everything doubly hard. That's what she said! <laughs> Anyway, trust me when I say that I'll be working on the next longer retrospective views videos soon, but for now, I wanted to do a quick one, and today I'll be looking at Evil West from Flying Wild Hog. Now, you're probably asking, why are you talking about this game versus the other major releases from the last few months? Well, three reasons. One, this one is horror-based, and while my channel isn't strictly horror, I do tend to focus on things of a macabre nature. Mostly. So, yeah, I'll likely try to do a short review on the Callisto Protocol when it releases. Two, the other major releases have been covered to death, and there's not much I could add, and this one hasn't gotten a lot of coverage that I've seen. And three, I had to pick and choose what I did a review on since I haven't had much time. But, in the interest of satisfaction, let me touch upon some of the major releases I have played. M. Modern Warfare 2. The campaign was nothing new and really disappointing, especially the stealth sections. They didn't inspire tension, only annoyance. Multiplayer is the same old crap, though I do play it in my spare time. Gotham Knights. Not as bad as I expected. While the objectives get repetitive and it's a grind, which I notice is very prominent in most games now, it's fun enough. Doesn't touch the Arkham games, but it's a decent homage. A Plague Tale Requiem. If you like the first, which was great but depressing as all get out, then you'll like this one. Feels a bit more refined, but has been good so far. Sonic Frontiers. Honestly, this surprised me. Not as bad as I was expecting it to be. Feels like Sonic meets Breath of the Wild with the open world exploration. I mean, the objectives are repetitive and the story seems like nonsense, but it really isn't terrible by any stretch. God of War Ragnarok. It's great. I really do think these Norse God of War games are so much better and more mature than the Edgelord ones of the old days. I look forward to seeing all it has to offer, and so far, it hasn't tried to fix what wasn't broken. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, now, Evil West. The footage you're seeing is from the first 50 minutes or so, though I will talk about some of what I've been playing since. I won't spoil much, so let's hit the story first. In this alternate version of the American Old West, vampires and other monstrosities plague the land and are hunted by members of the Rentier Institute, headed by William Rentier. You play as his son, Jesse, who combats the threat armed with, so far, a revolver, rifle, and shotgun, but most importantly, a powerful gauntlet that allows him to pummel, crush, and rip apart any monster foolish enough to get in his path. Working with a retired agent named Gravener, Jesse tracks a vampire named Debano to a meeting where he tries to get support in declaring war on humanity due to their technological strides. When he's turned down, he's battled and killed by Jesse, who brings his head back to the Rentier Institute. This proves to be a mistake when DeBono's daughter, Felicity, lays siege to the base and infects William, sending Jesse and other survivors on a quest to save his father and exact vengeance. Let's face it, the story is really nothing too special. It's gruff B-movie stuff told in a Tarantino Rodriguez sort of way, and it doesn't help with Danny Trejo being in advertisements for it, with over-the-top characters, bright colors, and ham-fisted performances. Think of it like a combo of Red Dead Redemption, the Wild Wild West, and From Dusk Till Dawn in terms of influences. It's steampunk meets horror, and there's nothing wrong with it, just don't expect a reinvention of the wheel. The same could be said for the gameplay. The game, while looking pretty good on PS5, plays like games from the 360 PS3 generation, and while that may sound bad on paper, it was weirdly refreshing. The biggest influence I feel playing Evil West is that of Gears of War, but if you added melee to the mix and removed cover-based shooting. I don't know. It was even down to how the camera is focused on Jesse and the machismo of some of the characters, though none went as far as Coltrane. You grubby ass bitches are going down! Like way down! Dead down! So down you ain't gonna know which way is up! Whoa, calm down, Jamal. Don't pull out the nine. <laughs> in the game, you spend your time battling various enemy types, some ranging to Lovecraftian creatures with tentacles, to speedy werewolf-like beasts, to large vampiric abominations with powerful attacks. While you do have ranged weapons at your disposal, your best friend is the Gauntlet, as you time your attacks and utilize blocking and countering functions to defeat your foes. So far, I'm able to use electrical attacks too. You can level up and purchase perks with skill points, and you can buy weapon skills with gold earned from discovery or 
battle. Even picking up the gold, which has a flying coin animation, feels circa 2008. You can find lore that sheds bits of info on the story, what little of one there is, and you can even alter Jesse's clothing items with different colors and unique pieces. They don't seem to grant any abilities, but hey, at least it looks cool. In terms of gripes so far, really, the main one I have is how linear the game feels, and this isn't helped by how everywhere you go to transition to a new area, there are glowing chains for you to climb on, jump over, or whatever. It's like the many games that utilize parkour and everywhere you can climb is painted. It feels like hand-holding, and it's irksome, but not something to kill the experience totally. Lastly, I haven't tried the multiplayer portion, but it's just where you can play co op online. I do wish more games would bring back local co-op. I don't have friends and am an antisocial prick, but anyway. So I can safely say that so far, this is a game I've enjoyed. It's nothing new, fresh, or totally exciting, but it doesn't have to be. It feels like a love letter to games from 10 to 15 years ago, but I don't mind that and it isn't a detriment. I feel like so far it's going to be a shorter experience than most games, even some of those I mentioned earlier in my review, but sometimes I like a nice, brisk adventure. And this one has plenty of pulpy blood and monsters to fill it. So, if horror and steampunk western hybrids sound like your thing and you don't need overly complicated stories or gameplay, then give this one a shot. I'll return with more soon, I hope. Later!